Welcome to the Make and Design Podcast. I'm your host, Karina Gardner. On this podcast, we're unraveling the everyday joys and dilemmas of design, making, and business. For makers who want to be designers and for designers who are makers, this is your inside scoop to help you grow your business and bring more creativity to your life. Hey guys, today I'm with Melissa Esplin. She is the owner of calligraphy.org. Um, if you want to catch our first episode, we talk about all the things like how she got from painting and art in college to calligraphy.org. So go check that out. She and I today are going to talk a little bit about mental health, art, creative, like what we need to do to rejuvenate ourselves. Melissa was just saying, we kind of ended on our last episode talking a little bit about how she's kind of doing all these wonderful things for her mental health. And in the process, maybe I would, I wouldn't say suffers the right word, but she's not getting as many sales, but I think you're like in a good spot. Like it feels like a good place to be. So why don't you tell everybody about like your decision to make that change and be okay with like financially where you're at and, you know, artistically where you are. Yeah. So, um, I've struggled with depression, postpartum depression and lingering depression that's happened after postpartum depression and um so understanding where triggers happen especially like when anxiety comes into play is really become it's become increasingly more important so a couple years ago I had the divine inspiration to get a dog for our family we also have a dog, but I'll tell you about ours in a bit. I want to hear about yours. Okay. So what dog did you get my son, Felix, he's got special needs and I'm like, he needs a buddy. He needs like this therapy dog. He needs somebody like just hang out with him. He was a runner. He was very much into running away, like calling the cops, searching, like search and rescue for two hours, like running away, scary, terrifying. You don't want to ever deal with that as a parent. So, um, I thought it was amazing. And I just felt this like divine inspiration that we needed to have this dog. And she was so cute and wonderful. And we surprised the whole family on my daughter's 10th birthday. (laughs) Did your daughter, it was was her dog. No, I was very clear. I'm like, this is the whole family's dog. This is going to be therapy dog, but like timing just kind of works out that, well, here's a dog. So (laughs) she was, she was the runt of the litter and just so stinking adorable. Um, and my husband's not a dog person. He doesn't hate dogs. He's just not a dog person. So it took a lot of convincing to get him on board with this dog. So I'm like, we're going to do it right. We're going to like hire trainers. It's going to be so amazing, Chris. So um, we get the dog to two weeks in, I'm getting about 30 minutes of sleep a night at the most. And I'm ideating suicide. I wanted to end my life. It was absolute hell. Wait, what kind of dog did you get? Let's just like specify that too. What kind of dog? A breed? I got a, I got a breed. I got a purebred golden retriever and she, she was bred to be a therapy dog. Like And I adopted her the same time my sister adopted her brother. So they're part of the same litter and her brother, which my sister still has, he is the sweetest, most gentle dog. Like she brought uh, Thor into Felix's classroom once. And he was just so good with these special needs kids. It was just like, he's a therapy dog. Like he really is. He's a great dog. So anyway, I'm like losing my mind. And, and Chris and I like have this argument and I'm like, Chris, I don't want to be the kind of person to say this, but it's me or the dog. He's like, you know, who's going to cheat? Like, come on. <laughs> like, this, why do you even have to ask this question? So we joke, but it's true. The dog sent me to therapy because it was like, clearly I was not managing. I wasn't coping. This was, this was a big problem. We ended up rehoming her. And she's now at a place where like, she's literally at a better place. (laughs) They have a pool just for their dogs. And turns out this dog has crazy health issues. She had to have multiple surgeries. She's on a chronic medication. We wouldn't have been able to afford her, to be honest. Like we wouldn't. So I, I think everything kind of turned out for the better. I needed to get in therapy. And I guess this was 
a catalyst that I needed in order to get there. So with the therapy, I've learned better coping mechanisms. I've learned, okay, I need eight hours of sleep and I need to prioritize eight hours of sleep in order for me to be mentally functioning at the level that I need to. Um, and then I need exercise and then I need to talk things out. I need to talk through my stress, my mental stress. So this therapy has made me realize like, I don't really want to, or need to hustle like I did before. And there is a certain thrill in the hustle and uh, there's definitely nothing wrong with hustling. There's a time and a place for it, but I'm not at that place right now. You know, my kids are still pretty young and, you know, I, I think I might be able to ramp up that hustle once my youngest gets into first grade, which is soon, like in a few weeks, to be honest, but I really prioritize if I, if I'm not right in the head, how can I help other people um, bring creativity and light into their own lives? So I need to, you know, have my own oxygen mask before helping other people. And that's the thing about calligraphy that I really love is a lot of people are in, you know, frustrating jobs or high stress jobs, and they need some sort of release. And calligraphy is this perfect combination of left and right brained art, where somebody who's left brain can look at it from a very analytical and very procedural uh, point of view and really get a lot of enjoyment out of it. And then somebody who's really right brain can explore letter forms and get kind of crazy with these abstract forms and also really enjoy it. So it's, I, and I'm a believer that everyone needs a creative outlet. It doesn't have to be a visual outlet. It can be musical, it can be food, it can be anything, but as long as you're being creative and you're thinking creatively, I think that's a really important thing for us to have as a human race. Like, I think that's a right that we should have access to some kind of creativity. So, um, that's what I want to provide in my classes is giving people that creativity that they need, that, that dose that they need. So it is kind of a mental health thing with calligraphy, even though it's not the focus. Yeah, that makes sense. Tell me about more about the left and the right brain thing you just brought up, because I've never thought of calligraphy that way, but it kind of is like, I don't think of that with painting. I don't think of that with artwork, but like calligraphy you're totally right. Okay. Get into it. Why is it left and right brain? Cause I think everything you're going to say, I'm going to be like, yeah, that's totally true. So it kind of goes back to the last episode, how I wanted to bridge that gap between the graphic arts and the fine arts. I wanted, I wanted them to play together and play nice. And this is where calligraphy just kind of fits that gap so nicely, uh, where you have these classical letter forms that are, uh, there's, tradition and there's theory and there's a lot of this structure that left brain people really thrive on you need that structure um, but there's also this creative aspect where you can go into ligatures which is the way that two letters form to become one like one of the most popular ones and just like regular type um, and like fonts is the f and the l they kind of come together and create this one character together you know you can get creative with those um flourishing and how to combine calligraphy with a myriad of other things so one of the things that i've been focusing on recently is journaling in its various aspects and so i'm combining illustration um spiritual thoughts and watercolor and graphic icons and putting them all together on a page to do to create something that makes me happy and joyful and helps me remember what I was listening to at church or what I saw on this hike, um, et cetera. But um, being able to combine these different things is very right brained and understanding of the theory and the structure is very left brain. And if you tend to swap between the two, you're, it's really fun um, avenue to explore because you get a little bit of both of those. Yeah, I love that. I also love that you just mentioned your journaling because I've been watching you do this, the bullet journaling, because I both of my daughters bullet journal and yours is incredibly beautiful because of the calligraphy. Like 
you're doing all these little watercolor things and these little drawings in it, but then you have all this beautiful type, like all around, I mean, it's calligraphy, but it just, and it feels like it flows, it's super organic looking. It's just beautiful. Like, I love it so Thank much. You. So Thank you. I, my mom has really amazing handwriting. She, she actually, she used to do calligraphy at Nordstrom for different special events. I'm like, mom, how, what? That's so cool. I had no idea until like two or three years ago. Anyway, but her journals have kind of always been under lock and key. And, you know, I get journals are one of those really like personal things. Um, but you don't have to have just one type of journal. And I, I, that was something that was kind of mind blowing to me is that I can have a journal that's just straight handwriting, telling stories about my kids. I can have another journal that's about the travels and places that I've gone. And I can have another journal about church and I can have another journal about, uh, conferences that I've gone to. And like it, it it sort of has expanded my idea of what the journal is and the purpose of the journal, because I find joy in sharing my journal entries now, whereas before it was like this embarrassing thing where I was like, oh. I didn't. yeah, super private. I, I was just thinking <laughs> that because I am a huge journaler, but I also have three journals, but they're not pretty. They're just very, I'm very, it's written. Like I'm very <laughs> Righty, is that a word? I don't know. Anyway, but I love yours because they're so beautiful, but they're also a form of therapy, right? Like for you, making them beautiful is like great for your mental health. For me, just scribbling as fast as I can, all the thoughts coming out of my head and getting them onto paper is another way to express myself, right? So yeah, yeah I love that. There's no wrong way to keep a journal except for not keeping a journal. <laughs> you guys heard that. From Melissa Esplin herself, not keeping a journal is the wrong way to not keep a journal. Is that what we just figured right. out? <laughs> but I, you know, I, I, I grew up with this idea that it had to be like a daily thing, yeah. but you think about how long our lives are. My grandparents and my mom's parents, they're both alive and they are turning 97 next month. Gosh, both of them, both of them together. Wow. They are celebrating 75 years of marriage this year. That's unbelievable. Isn't that insane? I'm just thinking if they wrote every day in their journals, can you imagine the stacks? It would like, be it'd just be so hard to find the things like the valuable gems because yeah. our day-to-day -day tends to be relatively mundane, but you string a few things over the course of a few months. And it's like, Oh, I could see this miracle in my life or I could see this growth in my life or this funny story so I don't think you have to write a daily journal or even a weekly journal I think it's just really important to check in and that's something that I realized when COVID first hit I um my aunt found a journal entry from my great 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 aunt I don't know there's, <laughs> there's some great there and it's an aunt Anyway, she wrote about the Spanish influenza and how oh church church services were were halted and everybody was in quarantine. I was like, oh my gosh, it just it gave me so much comfort. Do you know how long her journal entry was? Oh, I want to know. It was two sentences. Oh my gosh, that makes me feel better because I usually write in my journal at church. That's terrible to say, but that's what I do. That's great. Well, I went and looked at COVID and I think in a lot of ways, I was just living in the present during COVID, but just living in the present. And I have very few entries. I'm usually, I write once a week in it and there's very few entries. And I was like, oh, I should write a little more. I tried to write a little more about it, but I was like, during that period, we did have more time, but suddenly I was with my people, like my kids, my mm -hmm. husband, we were moving, we were doing all these things and um, we were just living in the present. Like, yeah. so I wasn't sitting down to journal all the time. We were outside playing, we were outside hiking, we were playing games, We I was cooking up a storm, you know? Like it was just 
I almost felt like we were living our best lives in some ways, you know, like here we are doing all the things, you know, there, there was a simplicity from like the early days of quarantine that I kind of miss. Yeah. This summer's been too crazy for me. Um, but there was just a certain amount of comfort, just even seeing a recognition that she went through the Spanish influenza and that um, it didn't need to be this huge, eloquent, crazy entry. So we don't have to be these amazing writers. We don't have to be um, the next, you know, I don't even know authors because I don't read <laughs> Jane. We don't have to be the next Jane Austen in order to. Yeah, you're going to go Jane Austen, token, but you went Jane Austen. I appreciate <laughs> like, that. We're ladies. We're <laughs> ladies, right? I'm like, you know, authors, where are they at? <laughs> but, we, but we really don't have to be the next Jane Austen in order to create something of value for our children when we pass on. And we don't have to wait until we pass on in order to share those journals with our kids. I think that's really what's so important. Okay, that's so amazing. You guys, if you want to learn more about Melissa, she um, has calligraphy.org. She's wonderful on Instagram. So what's your Instagram handle these days? I have two. I have at calligraphy.org and then I have at Melissa Fur, which is like Melissa and calligrapher. Oh, there you go, you guys. Boom. But it's it's, it's also <laughs> my husband, my husband's name is Christopher. And when we were first married and like Instagram or not Instagram, Twitter first became a thing, we thought we would have a joint Twitter account. Oh. And so that's like our, our like couple name is Melissa for Melissa and Christopher. Wait, so and does so, anybody use this Twitter account? That's the real question. Who's using the Twitter um, account? I took it over, but then I stopped using it because who uses Twitter now? I don't know. I, I don't. My husband does. My husband's like a huge Twitter. <laughs> I, it's certainly seen like it's in like resurgence in of late. Like I think my husband's gotten back on Twitter just because it's like quick. Yeah. And I think everybody wants something quick, but it's also yeah, like I the don't most up to date with news. That's why my husband likes it. He's like, oh, oh yeah. this, whatever's going on, I'm going to go check on the California fires. Oh, I'm going to go to Twitter. Because guess what? You can't get it quick news wise yeah. unless you're on Twitter. I just, That's just, true. So fascinating to me, kind of the way we use things and how it's changed over the last 10 years and will continue to change. Anyway, okay, we are going to end this episode. You guys, I'm going to have <laughs> Melissa come back for another episode because she is so fun. And I just love her and I love talking to her to see what she's up to. So you can check out all the things at calligraphy.org. Go check her out on her Instagram handles and we will see you guys soon. Hey, did you know that you can visit me at makeanddesign.com to learn more about this podcast and join my VIP group for weekly freebies? I can't wait to see you there.